Here today, the farm is, there is no doubt that it's adversely, I'm having a, you know, I'm doing my best to just follow through on all the pieces of these last weeks that I promised myself I would follow through on to lead, like, and I, it's, it's not easy. It's just chock full of uncomfortable. And part of my work is, I mean, the goal would be to finally by that last day, which is three weeks from today, you know, yes, comfortable, ready, feel good. Um, about leaving, uh, and I'm really not going to feel good until I'm done, but I have to go today. I've been working from home minimally the past few days because of peanut. Um, Traverse City, there was just, I, I have another recording that I think has enough drop points about it, uh, but that recording from, that was done Oh yeah, I kind of actually I forgot when I was recording on Saturday that I did that one because it just wasn't it was just too amped. Oh geez, I, I kind of feel like this one's probably going to be similar. I feel like it was calmer, which is good. And I got to remember this is for me. The utmost it's for me. It's for me to practice. I got to trust myself. I, I have to trust myself. I can't be affected by how or what somebody else receives my work as. Um, that's not my business. My business is to let my real, authentic, complete self out of the bag. You know? Take off my invisibility cloak. Like... Stop playing small. Stop hiding. And I've been hiding for really since I was 15, 16 years old. I've had glimpses of coming out. Um, the last one being in, in 2013. But everybody's reaction was pretty much the exact opposite of what my own reaction to myself was. So that will force you back into your rabbit hole really fast. I went out naively and innocently with seeing myself as this and being and, and feeling and knowing, like more confident in this knowingness and something bigger than me and willingly turning myself over to it thinking naively that I was the last one in the game. You know, that because if you're playing that game, you, you would never receive somebody the way I was received by everybody, which was uh, everybody close was not, not close. <laughs> and I'm not, that was hard. That was hard. Everybody played their role exactly as they need it, and, and, and it boils down mostly to family, but quite a few really close friends, too. Um, they, that was what, you know, I, I had more learning and growing to do. Uh, fast, like I had a lot, I had a lot of catching up to do with my, with now what I had remembered. My physical character had a lot of emotional catching up to do, really. Um, emotional and spiritual. Because even though the beliefs had always been there, I didn't see a way to live those beliefs in the world. And I saw less and less of that the older I got. And then once I got into the work world, holy shit, I didn't see any breathing room for spirit, for love, for all these things that were, you know, I, I just, I, I was a hot mess really fast after graduating college. Especially after getting laid off from my first job seven months into it and then getting married when I absolutely had no business getting married so um, so yeah I'm gonna end this and uh, oh my god three more weeks of this with the farm like it's whew, September's gonna be a ride I go to Lake Placid in three days I'll be back Monday. I'm home then for two full weeks. Two full weeks. 
until I go to Chattanooga. And then I'm home for only three full days before I leave for 17. Kona, Hawaii, and right from Kona, Tempe, Arizona. 17 days. Longest stretch. Not the longest stretch that I've done. 24 days is the longest stretch I was gone two years ago. But I'm only home two full days before leaving again for 11. So gone six, home three, gone 17, home two, gone 11, and that will be to Waco, Texas, and to Panama City Beach, Florida. And then I'm back, I'm back a little over a week and I've got a big local event, but at least it's local. And then just days after that concludes, I fly to Tempe again for the full Ironman. And I'm gone six days. That October stretch, and especially coming home here with the kids. And I do have a friend that's gonna be staying at the house pretty much for two months. And the cats know him. And I'm hoping, and he is so gentle. They both love him. So I'm hoping that mitigates what is going to be very hard on them and me. And as hard as it is, I need to begin to tell the story now because it's going to take a lot of fake in it to hopefully get to the point where I can live it by October. I have to tell it in the most positive way. I cannot believe that it hurts them or affects them badly. Because really, when it comes down to it, I really don't know. They're animals. And I very well could be projecting it onto them. Now, their behaviors would indicate, and their body, physical, would indicate that they, but like I said, it's, it's, it's impossible to separate, nor that connected, on the physical level, let alone below. So, uh, I want to try to document Again, as I've stated, this whole season, I have much more consciously been trying to channel the energy post Iron Man events, to channel it creatively. Even with just the intention and doing, trying to talk about it. But that, I really think, you know, the ones that have come out with music, that's, I've got a few musical playlists and almost all the, the best stuff of this year has been immediately after coming back from an Ironman event. In general, I feel good coming back for those events. They are better for me right now than being than my home energy. And that's hard for me because I I want I love my home. But all things considered, again, I've got some real shit here in town that I'm gonna get through and it is beautiful and it will be more beautiful when I'm through it, but right now, it's a little shitty. This farm thing is, ooh, my guy. And these living creatures that have no choice but to, they're in this with me, I mean, so I can't, and by virtue of the type of species they are versus me and the fact that they're domesticated, I have, to, I have the greater responsibility. Like I'm doing these things that are affecting them, which means I have the control, at least to some degree, to try to make it where I'm not adversely affecting them. Anything that's in my power to control to make it more positive for them and myself is in my best interest, and that begins with telling the best story. It's hard to tell a super fun story with the traveling for me because it's really hard with where I'm at in my world. Um, 
because I'm so sensitive. So I'm still processing one day and we're five days later, you know, so now, I, and I'm just over, I'm on overload. And it's not bad if I can, if I can take that overload and produce something, like actually produce something, not jibber jabber, that's okay, passes my time right now, but I, there's value in this. I can feel the value. I just need to hone in the energy a little bit more to produce something that at a minimum just makes somebody feel good. I mean, at an absolute minimum. And potentially paints a different story of human, of humanness, human interaction, and most notably of business and how business is being done, how work is being done. I'm really working to expand that definition and kind of openly saying it's integrating spirit. It just by being more open with it. Like, I'm not judging the game. I used to judge the game. I was full of judgment of the game because I was angry. Because I wasn't good at the game. I wasn't intended to play that game, but I didn't yet see the other game. So, I gotta end for now because this is still, Peanut's been waking me up throughout the night the past two nights. Like, she's almost needing me to guide her to eat, which, holy shit. Do you know how much, how hard it is to not worry? I leave again. This last trip, she really had her worst eating trip yet, meaning she did not, I mean, she, she's a little kitty. She's now under seven pounds. She can't lose 